Hello there, my name's Sally and I'm a dog trainer and behaviourist. I also do film work with dogs, so I train dogs to do behaviours and tricks for film and television and TV adverts and also for still photo shoots. One of the most useful things that you can teach your dog for film work is to go to a mark. Next time you're watching telly, look out for dogs on programmes or adverts. Quite often you'll see that the dog is going to a specific point on the set. Maybe if it's walking along a pavement and it stops at a specific point and sits. Um, it's, quite, it's quite often that that paving slab will be a slightly different colour and the dog has been trained to go to that mark and await its next command. That's what we'll be training here. We're going to start off by using a nice easy large target for her to notice. Um, I like using pieces of old carpet because you can gradually cut sections off to make the target smaller so that in the end you can get something that's barely noticeable. But we'll start off nice and easy. And we'll pop this down and I'm just going to hold Poppy by the lead and pop a nice tasty treat, Poppy, on the other side of the mat so that she can see it. Poppy, good girl. And I'll let her go and eat that. Good girl, come this way. So I'll hold her back from the mat, show her that I've got some treats, pop them down on the mat and then let her go in to get them. Good girl. This is just starting to create an association for Poppy between the mat and the food. This time I'm going to pop a treat down and I'm going to give her the command because I know she's going to go to that mat to get that food. So I'm going to add the command in now. Poppy, mark. Good girl. I'd also like to use clicker training with this so that it speeds up her learning. So I'm going to pop a treat on the mat. Poppy, mark. Good girl. And I click as her front paws touch that mat. That's what I'm aiming for, is her front paws to be on the piece of carpet. Poppy, try that again. Here. So pop that there, keeping her out of the way with the lead. Poppy, mark. Good girl. So she gets the click for her front paws go, touching the mat, and then she gets the treat off the mat as a reward to herself. Now she's picking this up very quickly, so we can move on to the next step already. And the next step, Poppy, is to take the treats, do exactly what you have just done, but pretend to put them on the mat and bring it away. Poppy, mark. Good girl. Now, there wasn't actually a treat there, but because we've done it a few times already, she was expecting the treat to be there. So she went to the mark, she put her front paws on the mark, she got the click for her front paws being on the mat, and then, she got the, then I put the treats down on the piece of carpet so that she could get the reward for the behaviour that she's just done. We'll try that again. Poppy, hold by the lead, pretend to put the treats down. Poppy, mark. Good girl. As soon as that paws on the mat, good girl. She can have a few treats off the piece of carpet. Good girl. And it's always great to have a bit of a break in between training sessions to let them unwind and also let them think about what they've just been learning. Good girl. So she's had a bit of a break. Let's see what she's remembered. Pretend to pop the treats down on the mat. Poppy, mark. Good girl. And the treats appear on the mat. Now, I don't want to be there right next to her given the treats on the mat every time. I want her to be doing that independently. So the next stage on is to send her to the mat, the mat and then to give her the treats from myself. So again, I'm going to pretend to put the treats on the mat, but come back a step or two. Poppy, mark. Good girl. And then I can come in and give her the treats again while she's still on the mat for now. Poppy. 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 Mark. Good girl. So she's getting to the mat now and then she's looking up. She's realising that there isn't actually anything on the mat, but she still knows that she's going to get her treat from me. So that's a good sign that we're ready to move on to the next step because she knows that there isn't, it isn't actually on the mat, but she still knows that the behaviour is going to lead to the treat. The next step is to see whether she's picked up on the command. So I'm not going to pretend to put the treat down there this time. Poppy, mark. Good girl. And as soon as she pops her feet on the mat, click to tell her she's doing well and get that reward in there before she's got off. If she didn't go to the mat, then I need to spend a bit more time on the stages before that by pretending to put the treat down and letting her go to find the imaginary treat and then getting rewarded. Keeping on adding that command in there so that she's getting used to the command means go to the mat to get your treat. 
The next step is to get a little bit of distance away from the mat. So I'll take a few steps back, poppy, mark. Good girl, very good. Now because I'm doing this on lead, I'm needing to go with poppy to the mat to give her her reward. What I really want is her to be going to the mat by herself, but she's not quite ready for me to give the reward away from the mat just yet. We need that reassurance to her, that reminder that being on the mat is where she gets her reward. So I'm going to try it off lead. Poppy. I'm going to show her I've got a treat, so I keep her attention. Poppy, here. Good girl. And give her the command. Poppy, mark. Good girl. Very good. Poppy, poppy. So now we can start working on that at a bigger distance. Mark. Good girl. Good girl. As with any trick training, to progress beyond the initial stages, we need to work on the three Ds. These are distance, duration, and distraction. The distance in this, in this instance would be how far away I am from the mat when I send Poppy to the marker. Duration would be how long she spends standing with her front paws on the mat before I give her a treat. And distraction would be working on it in different areas, maybe at home in the living room, outside in a field, um, along the street, on the high street, and as many different places as you can think of. Once you've got them going to this mat at a nice big size, work on all three Ds individually. Slowly increase them one at a time. If you're going to increase the distance that you are away from the mat, make sure it's in a nice quiet area where there aren't any other distractions and only ask them to stand with their paws on the mat for just a second or two before you give them that reward. The same if you're going to try in a different area, maybe outside in the field, then don't expect a very long distance or a long duration that they're going to be standing there. So I'm going to work on the duration by not giving her the treat immediately, but just waiting a second or two before, while she has her front paws on the mat. Poppy, mark. Good girl. Good girl. And she did very well at that, but we start off with just a couple of seconds and slowly build it up and build it up. Working on the 3Ds individually is the best way to create a very good, very solid behaviour at the end of it. Only once you've worked your dog with all three of the Ds considered can you start in decreasing the size of the mat. So with this one I've just taken a little bit off the edges so that it's slightly smaller, slightly more difficult for her to get her paws onto it. We'll see what she thinks. Poppy. Poppy. Yeah. Poppy. Mark. Good girl. Very good. Yeah.